Hi everybody, I'm on at Flickin' Feathers again today and I'm tying a humpy. It's a tricky wee fly, um, but it's a good fly to tie, a because it works, um, but also because it will sort of push your tie in a wee bit, and especially if you're a sort of intermediate sort of improver tyer, it'll sort of pushes you a wee bit to get things right. As always, I'll put a materials list in the description, along with a link to the Patreon page for anyone that wants to support the channel, get access to the members on the content, and be eligible for the giveaways. So I've got my hook and my vice, this is a size 14, uh, TM Co 100 BL, so it's the barbless version. And I'm just starting my thread, and this is 70 denier, uh, UTC and hopper yellow, um, but the colour, you can change the colour if you want. And I'm running on a bed of thread from about the one third point of the shank and coming right back to the bend. For my tail, I'm going to tie and a bunch of moose body hair. So I'm going to cut out a clump of hair. And then I'm just going to clean all the butts right. And you probably need cut more hair than you think you need, right? That looks like it's far too much for the tail. But the tips um, are obviously much finer. So I'm going to get that in my stacker. Right, and stack nice and easy. Right, a wee lice comb or something is perfect for uh, cleaning out the, the hair. If you clean the under fur, it will stack really easily. Length. I've got my th I'm measuring the length of the tail to be a shank length. And my thumbnail, you can see there, is right against the back of the eye. That's my gauge. So I'm going to transfer that. Grip it. Pinch wrap nice and tight, and then one, two, three more. Check the length. This looks okay, but if you're unsure, you can use your scissors as a gauge. Right, that's fine. I'm just going to run my thread forward a wee bit more so that I know it's the right size. And I'm going to cut this so shorter than the length of the thread base. So I'm going to come in. But there, actually maybe a wee bit shorter still. Yep. And then just lock it down. Come back. And now, my tail's a wee bit flared, so I'm just going to come back with like a slightly loose wrap. start of the bend to sort of gather it up then I can come forward and then I can tighten the wraps again once I'm a couple of wraps forward right, and that just gathers that tail in a bit better. I'm going to park my thread back at the one third point. If you've got air, um, air slightly closer to the bend, right? if you're a half mil closer to the bend it's better than being a half mil closer to the eye. Um, it just makes life much easier when you come to finish it off. So wing I'm using just some bleached elk. Natural elk's fine. You can use different deer hairs but I find elk to be quite good. And then I'm going to take again quite a large bunch um, probably more than you think you need. I'm going to grab it so I've got the, only the long fibres by the tip. I'm going to pull away any of the short stuff. 
because they'll know be long enough to make your hump. You need the feather, the hair to be. I mean, you can do it with probably two and a half hook lengths, but you really want about three and a half, three hook lengths in total, or so, for um, to be sure that you've got good handling. And then, same as before, just use the comb, clean out any under fur. And get it nice and clean, and this will also take away any wee short hairs that you might have missed with your fingers. And then, get that in the stacker as well. Now I like to always bring it out of the stacker in the right direction. So gather that up. And I always like to just have a wee check for any uh, broken ends or whatever. And then doing exactly the same as I did with the tail, I'm going to measure it a shank length for my wing. Now, this thread's not that strong, it's only 70 denier nylon thread, so twist it up. If it's lying flat, it will burst. And then you can just take a wee pinch wrap, pinch and loop, get it on to three turns. Check the length, that looks okay. So I'm going to take my thread back, just ignore the wing for now. Take it back three or f three mil, maybe four mil. Just this gives you like a clear base of where you're going to tie in your hackle. Now, there you go, right? You've got tons of elk hair coming out the back here. It's too much for the hump, right? It's far too much for the hump. So, you've got to cut away. half of it at least, probably more maybe about that right, you're maybe nearly three quarters I'm cutting away here right, now the reason I'm doing it like this is so that I have enough wing right, you sometimes see humpies tied and it's like they tie, I know you tie in like two hook lengths, you fold it over and you've got your wing. But the hump's the right size, but the wing's it's far too sparse, you barely see it. So by doing it this way, I'm going to have the hump in proportion and the wing in proportion. So I'm just going to tie this all the way back. I'm going to pull it up as I go. And this is just got to make sure it stays separate from... the tail and it doesn't go around the hook just checking on your side because that's you know you don't see that I just want to make sure I'm right back to the that tie in then I'll come forward again if you don't have a rotary you can still sort of rocket and check you know I'm just smoothing everything out here just tidy this up there's that one wee bit of hair there that I don't like take it away and now we're ready to split the wings right and I just sort of I look from above I look down on it and I have a wee Feel, feel the wing. That's not bad. And then I take an X wrap. One, two, three in one direction, and the same in the other. One, two, three. And that's how I separate them. Then I'll repeat.
and then we're ready to post them. Now, the angle of the wing, if I show you this one here, I want them sort of I want them sort of coming out, like, uh, filling the space. If you imagine a clock face, I want the wings sort of in between like, the 10 and 11 and the 1 and the 2. So that's the kind of angle you're looking for. Now, I'm going to post my wing first. I'm going to come up from behind and under, and then allow my thread to just gather them up, you don't need to murder it with tension I'm only going to come up like four thread turns and then I'll come back down I'm going to anchor my thread on the hook and then We'll do the far wing, much the same up from behind. One, two, three, four up, and then back down. And then anchor that on the hook again. Now, some folk We'll put a bit of cement on these at this stage. Um, I like to leave them until later because I can still sort of squeeze them and manipulate them to get them under control or move them a wee bit when I've put the hack alone. So once I've positioned the wings I'm going to come in and make the back hump and I've just got to use my thread to build up a wee fat sort of lozenge or something you know like a, a lemon shape and it can be fairly fat um, Just back and forward, allow the thread to flatten to give you a nice smooth body. Then, when you're happy, I like it to be maybe almost half the hook gap on this hook model right so like the size of the depth of the body there is about half of the size of the hook gap maybe a wee bit less now hump gather up all your fibres Pull it forward between the wings. Take a loose wrap. And you can use, you can actually use the elk, they lift it up and you can adjust the position. Second wrap. And you can just hold that and tighten down and that stops any rotation right um, if you have your gathering wraps a wee bit looser and you hold the hump and tighten you won't uh, you won't have the hump twisting onto the, the off side so just come in trim away my waist 
smooth all that down. Just cover it up. You don't need to be super fussy, just get it loosely covered. Just got to smooth everything so that the, the bottom's roughly flat. You never, you kind of get it perfect. It's some just with the the tie of the hump and all that. But I want something a relatively smooth base. And here, um, for winding the hackle on. Now I'm using two hackles, a grizzly and a red. I'm going for saddle hackle. We strip the stems longer than I need for the tie in. So I've got a wee bit of bare stem to allow me to set the first wrap on. I'm just going to tie both feathers in together. We set them on top of each other. And it really doesn't matter um, which one's on top, but the good side is facing me. So I'll tie them in. Sneak that back, and you can see there I've got a wee bit of bare stem. Then I'll just take my thread forward, catch these as I go. Nice and secure. Come all the way to the front. This is um these are saddle hackles I'm using. And you can see here I can still move this wing. So I've pulled it forward. I'm going to take that first wrap using the bare stem right up against the the hump. I'm going to come in and I want to get there's three behind. Then I'll pull my wing back. And I want to put three in front. So I want that first wrap right up against the wing. That's three and a bit there. Come across your thread. Three wraps is plenty to hold it. We to come in, hold everything, snip it away close. If you missed any, you might need to come in, but if you hold them really tight, you don't... If you hold it tight, close to the cut-in point, you don't really miss any, usually. I'm just going to tidy up my head. And I'll whip finish. You can use the tool or by hand, doesn't matter. Three turns is enough. away the waist and now I'm going to the wings are still although they've kind of, they, you might find that they, they want to go together but that's just nothing to worry about the they're still posted just come in separate them just encourage the hair back into the position you want. You'll sometimes be able to see from the front if a hair's in the wrong the wrong wing. And then I like to come in I use the applicator bottle and I've got some quite thin head cement here and I'm just going to put a drop a tiny drop and at the base of the wings just let that soak in, that'll firm up the posts, we drop in the eye, and I like to come across the back of the hump and just I'll let the I'll let the varnish go into the side of the thread body as well. That just toughens it up. It's a time consuming wee flight of tie, so I like to reinforce the hump. But there you go, there's a the humpy.
couple of loose fibres there that I don't like. As I say, it's a challenging wee tie. Um, I'd say start like, quite big, do them in like a 14 like this, or maybe even a 12. Um, but it's a good flight of tie, they certainly work, they're great on rough water. Free stones and all that, it could be some kind of mayfly. Could be a fluttering stone fly, could be a terrestrial. A nice wee attractor dry fly. So, I hope that was useful, I hope that helped you out with the humpy. If it was, please uh, remember to give me a thumbs up below and subscribe to my channel. Tight lines guys, bye.